Welcome to the TRG Podcast, everyone. This is the podcast where we discuss all matters of relationships that people are suffering from. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Welcome back to the TRG Podcast. My name is The Relationship Guru, and today's topic, we're going to be tackling building your own company from scratch. Uh, this should be a very interesting topic, so stay tuned for that right now. So I want to introduce uh, back Patrick. Uh, you all know him by now. I don't think he really needs too many introductions. Um, but I asked him to be here really on this podcast today because I think he's in a unique position to really talk about you know, some of these topics. You want to say hi, Patrick? Uh, hey, guys. How's it going? I hope uh, you're all doing great. Uh, thank you for coming back to another episode of your podcast. Um, I'm just happy to be here. Honestly, I've, I've been saying this like throughout uh, um, like multiple episodes already. So um, I'm grateful for the opportunity as well to to share some of my experiences about this topic. So um, let's just jump into it. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, before we get started, if you are finding us on YouTube, please like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, it really helps us out, and comment below. You can also find us on Amazon Music, iTunes, as well as Spotify. You can download all these episodes while you're riding to work or coming back from work. What better way to learn about some of the stuff that we're going to be talking about today than in the enjoyment of your commute? Uh, your daily commute to and from work. Okay, without further ado, let's get started on this topic. So, uh, Patrick, part of the reason why I wanted to tackle this topic today is because it got me really thinking about COVID times, how everyone, honestly, it seems like everyone and their mothers has an idea for a business. They want to start a side hustle. You know, they find a unique opportunity, especially in the e-commerce space uh, yeah. during this COVID time. And I don't blame them. You know, I applaud them for for trying something new. Like, would you agree with that? I do partially, uh, and I say partially because of these series of events that transpired early in 2020. I, I don't know if you remember that people were pretty much just drop shipping toilet yeah. paper and stuff like that. So I'm partially um, on the same boat as you. But just because of that reason, right? Yeah. Other than that, um, I think people are amazing. Uh, it's just a matter of having uh, an opportunity and then exploiting that. So um, at the same time, you're, you're, you're helping people. So it's great to see things like that. I think COVID personally to me has changed the way we do commerce forever. I don't think that we'll go back to some of the traditional methods. Not that malls won't be open and stuff like that, but I think that the e-commerce space um, has blown up exponentially, really, in the last 12 to 18 months. That really just can't be ignored anymore. You know, consumer spending is really leading towards that of fulfillment, and uh, a lot of companies are reconsidering very expensive physical spaces, right? Like leasing out hmm. places having to staff them, having to pay cam cost overhead, electricity, heating, I've heard about some um, of them. you know, like, and hey, I have to pay for this expensive real estate in downtown uh, and I have to pay for shipping, you know, delivery trucks to come restock my supplies, mm. all these right. kind of things. So there's a lot of things that go into that and not to say that physical stores are dead or brick and mortar stores <clears> are dead, but I think that just really opens up an avenue to a lot of these ideas. Right? Um, for sure so one of the things that i think that's important is you and i are in a pretty unique position to speak about some of these things we work with small to medium-sized businesses on right. a regular basis uh, you know you've actually started some small companies yourself and done Correct. different kind of side hustles so we can yes. talk about that a little bit but i think the first thing that i wanted to talk about is we often see so many ideas come across uh, that, you know, for this business owner that's like deer in the headlights, wide eyed, they want to be successful. They kind of have an idea, but a lot of times they're bad, right? Yeah. A lot of times they're bad ideas. They really haven't been <laughs> fleshed out properly. You know, uh, there's no planning behind it. Uh, there's no risk management kind of behind it. So let's talk a yeah. little bit about that. 
sounds like uh, amazing to me honestly uh speaking uh i think well it all has to start with something mm -hmm. and uh usually it's an idea right um i was just recently uh, taking a course uh, at harvard business university right uh, online but at harvard mm -hmm. uh, and it's free by the way but, uh, we can post a link if anybody needs it uh, about bootstrapping your own companies, right? And building companies out of products. So it's amazing how many people think that whatever they have uh, as an idea uh, actually is a product, right? When it really is not, not even uh, like half a product or something that is fully fleshed out already. And I think that's what makes or breaks everything uh, for small businesses and small enterprises. Uh, and the reason is how aware you are of your current situation and how much you know about, uh, well, the uh, market that you're trying to approach, um, who are your competitors, and, um, what sort of uh, marketing uh, approach are you going to take in order to, well, uh, uh, publish the, your brand and make yourself uh, be, be noticed, right? So there's a lot to unpack in there, right? Obviously, but going back to the to the initial premise, it's uh, it's just that, like knowing what you have it in your hands first, first and foremost. Yeah, I think it's really important, and a lot of people just don't do this. Plan accordingly. Uh, it's great to have these, like, come up with an idea and then want to make it a business. And I'm not discouraging people from doing that. But I, I see too many times people uh, will talk to people that will want to start an e-commerce t-shirt store. Right? Mm -hmm. And you really have to ask yourself, what is your unique selling point? What is your USB? You know, what is going to differentiate you from buying a t-shirt at any big box store, right. uh, any really big retailer online that can sell it for cheaper, that can fulfill <laughs> it for a uh, you know, shorter amount of time frame, ship it right to your door within 24 hours, uh, have way better selection, you know? Um, right. There has to be something that is going to fulfill a niche and that's really going to be your in at the end of the day. And it might not be t-shirts. Maybe you start off with t-shirts uh, and you, you know, evolve this into something else like knitted sweaters or something like right. that. Right, uh, or mocks even, right? Like, uh, mm -hmm. and you go into notebooks, pens, everything else, right? Mm -hmm. And that, that's a really good point as well. Uh, I was just going to mention that uh, uh, a lot of people will not even start with a product, right? They might even go as far as to um, bootstrapping a service, right? Uh, let's say like a concierge uh, service or a customer support service, um, you name it, right? Like yeah. a, an assistant service and stuff like that. There's multiple companies that have done that already. And I'm saying the, the truth, right, is that most often than not, uh, more sorry, more often than not, uh, you will find that your idea has already been explored, um, which is a great thing, you know, because you, you are able to well fully research your niche, find what fits you, what uh, motivates you uh, in terms of the creation of your product or and your brand, of course, before you even think about uh, well uh, launching your. Uh, your brand and your product or your service. Right. And I think that's really important to identify if whether it's a service or a product, uh, mm -hmm. whatever that might be, I think you need to think about an idea and then you need to start to map around yeah. that idea, right? So to brainstorm unique things. And it could be a t-shirt, <clears throat> but how is that t-shirt going to be unique? Is it going to have interesting memes on it, right? Like, is it going to be uh, particularly catered towards, I don't know, like a graphic cartoon that you're going to draw <laughs> yourself, you know, like, uh, or yeah. your unique, you know, your unique artist that only produces one <laughs> shirt, like one drawing for one shirt a day for 365 yeah. days. And that's a limited 
time, you know, piece. Like it's an art piece that only you can purchase, never going to be reproduced, right? right? That really creates a lot of, I guess, prestige, uh, you know, and uniqueness <laughs> behind that product. That's a little bit um, uh, aligned to, to, towards the approach that Supreme, for example, that's yeah. one of the brands that, that, that come to mind. Uh, yes, and well, you know how, how much impact they have had uh, throughout the years, even though the brand is pretty much just a copy of well, another artist. Uh, I just found out about that recently, by the way. But going back to the topic, uh, what you said is, is so, so relevant because you obviously need to... Uh, just, just a quick uh, tangent here. I have spoken I spoken a lot with uh, business owners, right? Like mm -hmm. small, medium-sized, uh, not really uh, like the huge enterprises. I wish that I had friends like that, right? Mm -hmm. But um, maybe with time. But, but the point is that they they often, uh, I mean, when they are already bootstrapped and they, they have a consistent revenue, they often know that they have to continuously be Try testing uh, whatever ideas they have at hand. Uh, the reason behind that is because you want to rule out um, the uh, things that you, you are just imagining or fantasizing about from the things that are uh, applicable to, to reality, right? To the current state of, or, or of affairs, whatever you are trying to publish your product or launch your product. If it's a digital product, Let's see uh, who else is doing it. For example, um, I mean, you were mentioning uh, T-shirts, right? It's a little bit of a digital approach, of course, because you need a, um, an e-shop, right? Or maybe a, a platform that will allow you to upload your uh, your, your signs and they they, uh, they carry over like pretty much the other part of the business, which is like printing the T-shirts, sending them, and blah, 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 right? So uh, you have to think about all of those things. First and foremost, well, what is my product? Uh, what am I trying to create? If it's already been created, then what have my competitors, who are my competitors, and what have they, 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 they created already? Um, and what, what, can I, what can I improve on? Or what can I change or remove that will make me obviously uh, shine above all them or make myself noticed, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that's the first approach, yeah. I think those are things are super important, um, which is absolutely necessary for people to map out before they get started. I think the, the second thing that I did want to touch on, uh, Patrick, and I guess this is a, a little bit... So I guess the first topic is really just finding a USP, finding a unique selling yes. point and really uh, identifying what that is. I think the second thing is test before you go to market. So I think a lot of people do not do this. Um, and I think that they think, <laughs> they, they feel like, okay, well, you know, who am I going to test this on? You can test yeah. this on your friends. You can test this on your family. <laughs> Honestly, just ask them for honest feedback. Like, would you use this product? You know, right. like, would you use the service? Like, do you think that there is a market for this service? You know, doing the research in your local community on whether or not the service even exists and what the pricing models might look like for that. How many competitors are even out there in your local market, let alone, yeah. you know, uh, countrywide market, national market, <laughs> international market, right? Um, yeah. So I think starting from the grassroots to see what is my target market and can I exploit that is super, super important. For sure. And just to be piggyback of what you said earlier, uh, once you have your unique business proposition, right? Uh, which is like the ter technical term for everything we said uh, about, about fleshing out your brand, knowing where it works, at, and then obviously jumping into uh, well, positioning, right? Your, your, your brand among your competitors and really, really like chartering these uh, uh, competitive uh, 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 well, environment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and getting to understand 
your limitations first and foremost versus your your advantages over them I, I mean i have heard multiple times about um, these enterprises that are so huge and mo most people will know that when companies are really really big a change is more than likely not going to happen at a pace uh, such as that of startups right so uh, you are part of that now and you have an advantage over them so you have to start thinking about those sort of advantages that will get you or give you an edge uh, depending on the product or service that you're trying to sell mm -hmm. absolutely so i think that's obviously super important i don't mean to be pessimistic with uh listeners out there i think most people need to understand that 80 to 90 percent of businesses fail within their first year in their second year maybe 50 out of the 10 or 20 percent that survive maybe 50 percent of them make it to year three or four or even year five so the odds are really, really stacked against most people. They're not going to have the runway uh, or the bandwidth or, you know, the time or the knowledge or, you know, uh, the capacity to be able to see this through till the very end. And front loading a lot of that planning and that preparation, I think will really help you navigate that space and save you a lot of heartache to be honest with you uh you you don't want to start a t-shirt shop order ten thousand, you know copies of this t-shirt from some factory only to find out there's absolutely no market for this no one wants it like you know yeah. like i have my whole apartment filled with t-shirts now where am i supposed to put this stuff like no one's going to take it even for a penny right how am i going to yes it? You tap into something that I share personally, like um, like, like experience. I, I have first-hand experience with this. Sorry, I'm getting tangled in there. Uh, but, but what I'm trying to say is, um, back in 2018, I actually started a beauty products uh, business, right? Mm -hmm. I initially uh, intended to distribute to merchants uh, where I live in Mexico City and I was trying to well, land deals with them like I, like I was visiting uh, downtown shops and big shops and I was just well going shop to shop uh, showing the products that I had and um, well the products were really good they were uh, they were imitations of uh, big brands. Uh, they are not copies or or fakes, right? But they are imitations in the sense that they have the same uh, ingredients and everything else. Uh, long story short, I mean, but, but it has a different brand, obviously, right? But but that's your business. Brand. I mean, that's your selling proposition. Uh, I knew that I had a Mac product, but with another name but it really did have the same quality well maybe not the same quality but up to that uh to that level and only with that really really keen eye you would be able to notice the difference so uh i had to test a lot in order to find out what worked and what didn't but in the earlier stages i, I actually remember that that, that uh, i started the business with uh fifteen hundred dollars by the way Mm -hmm. um, usually, you will want uh, to put forward at least one thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars just to have a little bit of leeway. Uh, but honestly speaking, uh, as things uh, have been, uh, improved and evolved, I think uh, I mean, like the initial investment really depends on what you're trying to achieve in the product. In any case, so uh, I started with uh, fifteen hundred dollars and. I just pretty much went to, I mean, went into uh, Alibaba, right? Uh, it's pretty much the major uh, uh, store or uh, marketplace where you can go and buy in bulk. Mm -hmm. So I just pretty much looked at the million different uh, publications that there were and picked uh, five, ten, ten of them, and I bought some packages of those, right? without even i mean like thinking about 
are these um, these products new are they relevant still things like that right which you don't you do not think initially but you find out afterwards of course you find out the hard way sometimes yeah, and the hard way yeah, yeah. i i know it, i think you bring up, uh, bring up a really good point i think it's tempting <laughs> for business owners sometimes to order in bulk because if i get it in bulk i get a discount i get a discount uh, and yeah. you know hey i'm gonna save a lot of money if i put in <laughs> all this inventory then that's gonna mean i'm gonna get ahead i'm gonna buy more inventory reinvest in the business and yes there's some truth to that but i think there's levels to that right yes. like i think that you have to have proof of concept first, first. Uh, to understand hey i have a business plan here uh i have you know my core products i have my target market i've tested my target market i understand my reach which we'll get into yeah. and all these kind of things and then maybe you start to do something right uh, yes i I can't really say whether a thousand dollars is enough to start because I really think it depends on the business that you're in and the country that you're in as well. I think what I will say is don't put all your eggs in one basket, just like most things yes. in life. Uh, test the waters a little bit. Yeah, you might take a hit by ordering 10 units, 100 units, 50 units. You're not going to get the best retail pricing or wholesale pricing, but at least you don't lose your shirt. You know, yeah, like you're, you're just going to put it a little bit out there, see if there <laughs> picks up traction and then kind of go from there. Right. Of course. And there's this beautiful thing about, and I consider it beautiful. I'm going to explain, uh, explain soon why, uh, about picking the right niche for your, your product or service yeah. or your idea. Uh, it really does depend on, on multiple factors. Uh, I used to also design t-shirts that was back in 2015 I did it for more than four years actually. It worked and I built a steady income, like a passive, passive income stream, which I probably should, probably should think about doing uh, again yeah. uh, in any case. Uh, I used a, a service called Redbubble, it's a platform for creators where you just go in there and pretty much have a catalog of millions and millions of t-shirts, mugs, uh, you name it, right? So you, you can even buy like canvas printouts uh, of designs, right? So you upload your your, your, your products in there and then obviously they carry out, carry out the, uh, the orders. But um, the beautiful thing about this is that this entire process for me to reach that point I had to go through uh, first selling them again, like through two friends, uh, selling them on, on eBay, right? And on Craigslist and stuff like that. And once you find out like the right platform for your product, your right audience, you start seeing huge differences, right? Mm -hmm. uh, as, as I was mentioning, I built a, a passive income stream, which meant I didn't have to work at all to make money. It was not giving me like huge uh, amounts of dollars, right? But it was helping me uh, a little bit as I was dedicating my time into other other venues. Awesome. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is some kind of business plan, um, like, a, you know, a mission statement, uh, core values, um, <clears throat> I think that's really, really important that a lot of people don't spend the time to really flesh out. And the reason why this is important is if you happen to catch fire with your small business, you are going to need some kind of true North Star to really navigate the waters through and to understand why am I doing this? You know, <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's for your mental well-being. It's also for your team's <laughs> mental well-being. But it's really for you to understand what was the original goal that you set out to do from day one when you had nothing, right? Right. And if you don't have that true North Star, you're really going to lose your way. Um, Indeed. And let me tell you something, and sorry for hijacking no, your, okay. your, your, your excellent uh, comment. There, there's two sides of the coin in here. Uh, obviously, when you're bootstrapping, you're limited, you have limited resources, limited uh, connections, limited everything, right? Uh, chances are you're pretty much uh, always like waging your entire um, like, 
future in just one one product or one order, right? So, uh, I was just finding out like a couple of weeks uh, earlier that even when you you become like a fully fleshed out startup and you become funded, I mean, 10, 20, 50 millions do not represent a huge amount of money. The money disappears. I have not experienced this firsthand, but I have seen it on multiple occasions. Uh, under many different companies that I have worked for, I have worked for fintechs, I have worked for banking, uh, e-commerce, um, marketing, and uh, even certain software as a service companies in the startup and, uh, environment. So yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Super important. Um, I think having a true North Star is super critical for everyone to sit down and think about. And this is not to say that your North Star is not going to change over time. Sometimes mm -hmm. it does in the history of the company, and that's yes. okay. Um, but having <clears throat> those principles in place uh, really helps you establish what you're about and what kind of things that you're trying to achieve uh, with your company. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is, I, I guess this ties really into your USP, but it's, it's reach, so market reach. Hmm. Uh, so a lot of people don't really sit down to think about the logistics of their product. If they have a service-based product or if they have a, a product, how much reach they can, can they get to? You know, yeah. with their, whether it is in their local neighborhood, their city, <laughs> uh, their country internationally you guys need to understand that shipping has a cost right uh fulfillment has a cost and it's a high one uh it can be a high yeah. one and if you ever try to negotiate with shipping companies on rates they will always <laughs> reply i would say 99 percent of the time they will reply the same way yeah, good luck, right? Uh, they'll say, they'll, they'll, well, they'll say good luck after this, but what they'll say initially <laughs> is show us the volume and we'll give you the discount. Yeah, of course. It's always uh, like that. Yes, and, and multiple times you really need to, to have some volume first, like order volume, in order to be able to open up like an, uh, an enterprise account with a uh, uh, ship company. <laughs> It's, it's fantastic uh, how easy it is to, to lose your, 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 your path if you focus just on money. Um, just piggybacking off your uh, North Star comment. Uh, I think that obviously um, all companies are aimed towards generating uh, revenue and also profit as well, mm -hmm. becoming uh, independent and uh, um, and obviously outputting something that uh, helps humanity or a specific, uh, uh, or solves a specific problem, right? And I think that seeing it the, the, the other way around, like obviously uh, first my product, then the, the, the profit is the, the right way. That's just a personal opinion. Um, I've seen examples of both uh, ways of thinking that work regardless because the product is good, because the approach is good, because the right experience, the right team, everything fits, right? And uh, uh, that's a make or break uh, at that stage, right? When you already have your product, already have your, uh, well, your niche, you need to know exactly what are the steps that you, you are, you're gonna have to carry out once you land the sale. I remember back in the day when I had my products at, at hand, I was so happy because I was like, oh yeah, the, the shipment arrived, right? I was so happy, obviously, you're putting a lot of money into that. Yep. And it's pretty much something that you can, you can potentially lose, right? Mm -hmm. um, for a myriad of reasons. But now you have the product, uh, you have the product, and you start thinking. I ju now I just have to sell it, right? Yeah. And you even start uh, thinking like, okay, how many pieces do I have to sell in order to recover my investment? All right, then, and and you get so so happy, and you start thinking about, okay, I just need to sell like thirty percent of my uh, my uh, inventory in order to to recover my my 
my investment, and then it's just profit afterwards, right? Yeah. But the reality and the truth of this is that it's so, so hard to sell the product, especially when it's something that is new and uh, something that is competing with other brands that are super well positioned and obviously yeah. have uh, in spa, I mean, like untapped, uh, uncapped amounts of money. And consumers, I think to kind of uh, put a little footnote with that, consumers are in a very unique position this day and age where they have the resources at their fingertips to compare. It's not like 20 years ago when I was, you know, in high school when uh, you, you don't really have Google or Google was just starting off and you can't compare pricing. Uh, or product features um, or uh, fulfillment times. You had to go to a brick and mortar store to get those things. So you're limited to where you can get those things. Um, you know, compare reviews, which is obviously a huge one, or uh, even like stuff like YouTube videos, right? To yeah. see what the, how the product functions, right? Like, yeah. uh, and, and you know, uh, there's a ton of YouTubers out there like, uh, like Linus Tech, you know, or or um, uh, Hardware Canucks that review laptops, you know, they tell you everything, they put stress tests to it. So my point is like, there's so much knowledge for consumers to have right now. You can't just like trick them, you know, into buying <laughs> your product. Not that you're trying to do that, but like people are educated. They're gonna make educated decisions and you need to find a way to get even ahead of that in order to yes. stay ahead of the competition. That's why finding a USP, like all these things that we're talking about today, um, you know, listeners out there, they'll synergize with each other, right? That's why finding a yes. USP is so important, right? And so but, hard at the same time. Right, exactly. And and uh, and that's why reach is so important because if you're thinking, yeah, I'm just gonna go uh, national and, and you know, <laughs> hey, I, I live in Vancouver, I'm gonna ship something to Toronto. Well, guess what? Your $30 t-shirt costs someone another 10 bucks to ship all the way over to them. So that t-shirt was actually $40, which you're only going to see 30 bucks minus your cost because $10 goes to the shipping company. And yes. then you got to think realistically, is someone actually going to pay $40 for your t-shirt when they can drive down to a big box store right around the corner and get one for $14.99 or something like that, right? right? Uh, or or even know. like, yeah, and you're tapping into something super important, which is obviously uh, building your prestige, right? Yep. Obviously, uh, making yourself be like um, desired, that's the word. So, uh, as you were mentioning uh, all of this, I was thinking about Apple. Apple has been one of the most successful companies. But not without its its uh, ups and downs, of course. Yep. They had they have created awful products uh, mm -hmm. in the past, in my opinion. But holy smokes, um, every time you talk about um, this battle, uh, this ongoing Android versus iPhone, iOS sorry, uh, battle, what do you, what do you hear people say oh, more often? Like iPhone is for people with money, right? Or for people that value or a, a certain lifestyle, I would uh, say. Yes. Yeah, it's a very lifestyle brand. Uh, like that's really their pitch, right? Uh, yeah. At least in my opinion, in the early days when you were using, um, what was that product called? Was it called the? Are you talking about Walkmans? Yeah, but not Walkmans though. Like they had the I. The, gosh, it's been so long. Uh, their MP3 player. So right. before they had the iPhones. The had, iPod. Uh, it was the iPod Nano, the iPod. The, ah. Yes, the iPod Nano. IPod. So that was a big, I, I remember the marketing <sighs> pitch for that was like lifestyle brand. So people that were running, that were jogging, cycling, going to work in a busy commute and just put it mm -hmm. in their kind of like breast pocket or whatever, <laughs> uh, like wearing it on their, you know, like wearing it on their oh, sleeve. Oh, in your sleeve, yeah. Yeah, the Nano. So, and, and it was always like people of different ethnicities and age groups and different sexes doing different activities. Yeah. Right? And it was like, you you can pretty much take it anywhere and it will still show. And, and that's 
that's also part of like the entire marketing strategy that they have. It's you will have a product that everybody desires, yeah. but not everybody has, right? Yeah. And I mean, maybe uh, going back a little bit to the point, uh, maybe you will not have a product that everybody desires, but, uh, but not everybody has. Uh, chances are you want uh, just a few people to have it, right? But maybe everybody can buy it because it's not expensive, right? Uh, it's inexpensive. So uh, you really have to, to sit down, um, do a lot of testing, obviously, uh, reiterate, modify your product. If you're creating something from scratch, which is, in my opinion, better than just reselling, that's a different, entirely different business. Um, but at the same time, I mean, it's it's honest job, honest work and everything. So, uh, but but creating something from scratch and finding that that niche, that uh, target market, that really is uh, going to, to buy your products consistently, is probably the earlier the earliest. Uh, uh, hardest challenge that we, we could say like that right because it could either again make or break your brand uh, if you don't know who you're going to sell to and how much you're going to charge for it and the reasons why you're going to do so you are pretty much a, at an impasse in there right mm -hmm. absolutely I think the the last point that I wanted to talk about, uh, Patrick, is um, just I, this is some advice that someone gave me uh, that was kind of like a venture capitalist that invested in a lot of uh, small and medium sized businesses, invested nice. in apps and stuff like that. And this is something that I've kind of picked up uh, along the way. Surround yourself with <clears throat> people that you trust, oh. that you know, and you have worked with. Um, the reason why I mentioned this, this is just my take on this. In business, some days, just like going to the gym, some days get very lonely and they get very cold. And they get very cold very quickly. Yes. The water gets very cold in the deep end and not a lot of people can survive that when they're looking around. So you need, it's better to have people around you that are as invested as you are because there are going to be times just like the gym where you don't want to get up to go to the gym and you're going to need someone to pull you up and say no get your effing ass to the gym now right <laughs> i'm going to help you do some you know bench presses or whatever so i think that's super crucial and the other point that i wanted to touch on with that is make sure you've worked with them um, the reason why I say this is because you can put out a flyer of gathering a whole bunch of minds together that are like, Hey, this is the topic. This is what we want to do. You know, mm. let's, let's do a brainstorming session. Cool. Let's partner up and stuff like that. The issue with this is there's so many variables that come into yes. place when you're doing business. You don't know if you jive with that person until you've actually worked with them. Uh, their core values could be different. Their vision of the company could be different. Their intentions of the company could be different. Their intentions literally could be, hey, Jeff, let's blow this company up and then uh, let's do liquidation. So let's blow it up to a $100 million company. We'll liquidate. You take 18 million, I take 18 million. This, you know, we pay out back the investors, like all these kind of things. But your mindset could be, well, shit, we worked so hard up yeah, until this point, no. you know, to get the company off the ground. And I think we really have something here. Why are we stopping at a hundred million? Why yeah. don't we stop at, you know, like, uh, yeah, 1 billion, right? Uh, yeah. 1 billion, you know, like a, or a maybe even more. Plan. Yeah. Even more. Yeah. So there's a whole bunch of things that come into place, uh, when, when you're dealing with business partners and, and, um, you know, unique things like that. I think the reason, you know, part of the reason <clears throat> why you and I worked well together is because we worked together before this yes we met yeah. through 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 a work partnership of course and sorry for interrupting no that's way. okay thank you uh, I, I just wanted to say that you are like the living example and my the closest uh, uh, reference that I could uh, possibly have I mean if anybody 
came to me and and told me like okay you're you're telling me all the, all this about like paying attention to like my product and everything right i mean my niche and uh, pricing and everything okay you, who who taught you this or how have you done this before right how many times and how did it go well uh you are like the living example of bootstrapping something obviously but actually getting through to the execution right and uh i'm not saying that we have everything fully fleshed out fleshed out already we're discovering a myriad of things and um, more often than not, like the learning processes are super exciting and super amazing because you discover things that you never thought possible. But at the same time, there's up and downs, obviously. And uh, maybe when one video doesn't uh, perform properly, uh, you can start doubting yourself. So that's what I was trying to get to, right? Uh, it's the early stages. so. You really, really have to have, and and I think this is also another value that uh, people that make it um, past the initial stages have is you need to have tolerance and patience. And I'm not saying this because uh, you have to wait like one year, five five years. Well, there's people who have uh, pretty much just uh, went at it for 10 years straight into, until they found their niche but their products were so good that they were fit for many different industries so they were able to survive that might be the case but even if you do not have like your entire formula discovered yet that doesn't mean that your product will not work it's just a matter of nailing it down and then obviously uh, transitioning over to the uh, next steps depending on your strategies i uh thank you uh very much for the, the compliment <laughs> i really do appreciate it first and foremost i think we could actually do an entire episode of uh e even though the channel is very new our youtube channel is very new and the podcasts are very new i think we sh we could do an entire episode honestly just on that uh on the planning process things yeah. that we've tried things that we failed at things <laughs> that we're still trying um and, and to give people some highlights as to not every day is going to be sunshine and rainbows guys. Like not every single not day you're really, going to wake yeah. up and have a hundred million subscribers. Like, <laughs> you know, like I, yeah. I, I think I read some statistic out there that was like, uh, I can't remember what percentage of YouTube channels, um, make it past like the, yeah. Make it past like the 1000 subscriber mark oh. or whatever. Right. And it's like, it's few, right? Like we're, we're talking like, <laughs> 10% and under, you know, um, wow. yeah, even the 10,000 and, and then like a hundred, you know, hundred thousand, one million mark. So, uh, we're in for a journey Good here God. for sure. Um, but I think the hopeful thing that I would say is after doing a lot of research on a, a lot of different YouTubers that I respect, most of the comments just say to people, and maybe this is encouraging for people that are home that are aspiring YouTubers or content creators. Just put out content out there. Yeah. It does not have to be perfect. Uh, you might not have the capabilities to do all the SEO stuff and all plug in the social media and all that kind of stuff. Put content out there because you're never going to know until you actually put content out there and then refine it from there, right? Like of course. do your job to like analyze things and refine it from there and get better content over time. I think some people stress way too much about creating <laughs> absolute, <laughs> the, the absolute perfect video the first time around. <clears throat> and that's really good, just going to stall progress. Yes, indeed. Um, and I think, well, you just put the perfect, uh, perfect example in here uh, because you gave like the elements that compose these trials and tribulations and this uh, testing uh, stages where you really really need to output something in order to get back that precious feedback well which is probably uh, one of the most disregarded pieces of uh, information uh, i mean that, that you can get from your customers like directly from them uh, when people usually give feedback at least in my opinion is because they really care about the product and they want to see it shine and 
and well to boom. So uh, I guess my final uh, piece of uh, advice for, for just for now is always listen to your, to, to your customers too, or always try to get that precious information back from them in order to continue improving your, whatever you are creating or uh, producing. Yeah. That's one thing that I don't think that we went into too much, which is yeah. obviously identifying your target market and marketing this to your friends and family, but take that feedback seriously. Like I don't, I, I've seen so many tech companies, not just tech companies, but other companies, they produce a product that no one wants and then they want, they don't understand why it fails or they produce a game like a game developer. They produce a feature in a game that absolutely no one asked for and they and wonder why sense. the game failed. And it's like, listen to the people that are actually buying your product. If they say that you should put a leaderboard on here, put a leaderboard. <laughs> they say they want like, I don't know, some kind of Royal Rumble feature where everyone's just like, you know, fight to the death, <laughs> so to speak. And like, you know, PUBG or whatever that might be like, do that, right? Like, that's what people want. I know that people have limitations and they have, you know, some kind of business constraints on those kind of things, but listen to... Yes, at, at least listen. And, and uh, just piggybacking on that and really, really put your thoughts into, into these uh, pieces of, of feedback that you're getting back because chances are that's where you're going to find the actual product that you're trying yeah. to create, like the untapped, like USB, UPS, sorry, product that you are trying to, to reach or, or, or this stage where the product is so good that people cannot live, live without it, right? Uh, I mean, we're probably shooting a, li a little bit too much into the yeah. future already with that one. And there's multiple, multiple uh, topics that we can talk about, just like you said, right? Uh, but it, it, it will depend on, on what uh, our viewers want and listeners as well. So, um, yeah, I, just let me know and uh, I'm just happy old ass always to, to be here, man. <laughs> the, the last thing that I wanted to get into, I think we have about 10 minutes here. Um, okay. Good. Is um, just, you know, I, I heard a quote um, the other day when I was talking about uh, when I was actually listening to some YouTube videos about startups and kind of like their top 10 tips and trials and tribulation. I think Jeff Bezos had a, a quote and I'm paraphrasing here. It's not an exact quote, but always pick truth over consistency. So what he meant by this was, I, I think this is the best example I can give you. So my grandfather, he used to own um, a textile company. This was back in pretty much World War II or like, you know, oh. during that time, right? So this was years ago and it was in China and he owned a very successful textile company. And from that textile company, he started to branch out into other companies, right? And other things. But during the war, all, you know, all those companies were doing well, but the textile company took a huge nosedive. And right. the problem was that he couldn't see the truth because he invested so much in kind of consistency with his textile thing. He was almost married to that business. He was like, this is my baby. This That's is where we started. Job. This is the origins of everything. This started everything. We have to keep this. But it's like almost like a gangrene limb. Like he just literally yeah. needed to cut it off and he didn't do that and that was really his downfall you know at that time wow. you know like yeah though no, to, to be completely honest with you he was a very wealthy man at the time because of uh, because of that business and all his other businesses but it obviously took a turn for the worse and wow. I, I feel like that's a really important lesson for a lot of people um you really this ties into my kind of next point which is my final point but you really have to seek truth over what you've invested all these things in. I think oftentimes, maybe in the tech world, it's like, okay, we spent three years developing this app. Mm. We've gone through Q and A, we've gone through alpha, we've gone through beta, we've gone through this, we've gone through that. We've hired this product manager for this, blah, blah, blah. We've done all these customer testing. It's like, okay, I know it really sucks for you to like, 
sit there and be like, did I waste the last three years? But you know what's even worse? Spending the next two years trying to perfect a product yeah. that eventually just won't work when it goes to market. Yeah. That's even worse. That's even worse. And it goes all the way back to what we were saying. Just launch, right? Yeah. Just, just obviously at least get the minimum viable product, which is what, what, what you would consider um, anything that you can put, uh, obviously uh, monetize and put out there and works at least, right? Uh, but then start thinking about the, the different additions, right? So if you're gonna sell shirts, yeah, maybe later down the line, uh, after you have sold your first couple of shirts, then you, you can start thinking about BMAX shirts and maybe even branching out for uh, well, uh, kids shirts and hoodies and everything like that, right? So but it has to start with something. There needs to be spark that guides everything else or that, that, that ignites everything else. Uh, uh, obviously, your first uh, iteration or your first try, your first couple of batches, depending on whatever you do, if it's a product or a service, your first couple of releases, well, they are going to be defining for you, right? Mm -hmm. And you're probably not going to get as much feedback or the feedback that you really need in order to, 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 to improve your product. Uh, oftentimes, um, you're going to find that people just tell, bro, it sucks. Uh, I don't care anymore, right? <laughs> it's it, like your product's in beta and it sucks. Well, goodbye, good luck. That's it, right? So uh, it's, it, it really does fall down to what you were saying, right? Uh, and I think it's one of the greatest pieces of advice that we could probably put out there for this one. Yeah. The last thing that I wanted to mention is uh, self-reflection and separating your ego from your business. So I know this is a very difficult one for a lot of people because you're putting your blood, sweat and tears into something. You're probably going to have an ego about it. You're probably going to want to keep it alive and, and uh, you know, everything. Um, but sometimes you're your own worst enemy uh, when, when it comes to some of the business decisions. That's why it's, you know, I was alluding to the fact it's important to have business partners to really have checks and balances for yourself when you're making wrong decisions. Um, I think it's also important like to have self-reflection when I put out a crappy YouTube video and I know that, <laughs> hey, I that day I was tired, I mailed it in, it wasn't exactly. my best performance. I didn't do a second take or a third take, you know, like nice. I need to really assess whether or not that's an episode that's worthy of giving to my editor to edit and put live. Is that an accurate representation of, of who I am and what I do? No, it's not. Okay. then I need to go back to the drawing board to flesh out a better idea. Right? Exactly. But, but, but you really need to let go of that ego and, and become one with your product or your company, but at the level where you are not married with the company, but instead you are in a symbiotic relationship pretty much. One depends on the other, but at the same time, you know that you depend from your company because, well, eventually, if not already, you're generating revenue and profit. Uh, but at the same time, if you don't have the company working, you don't generate that. You don't have your stability. They, so many things, right? And, and then comes, well, liabilities with your uh, employees and things like that. But if you are not able to let go of whatever idea that you have at the moment, um, just like you were saying, right? With, with your grandfather, he was not able to see the truth. Yeah. Right? Uh, over consistency because at the end of the day, uh, yes, you might be the best at creating, well, t-shirts, right? Yeah. But if the trend right now is purchasing hoodies, yeah. and you don't want to, uh, to, 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 to manufacture hoodies, then chances are you're, going, you're probably going to uh, uh, break your, your brand and your company and obviously all the background, right? Which is what 
which is what happens a lot and yeah. uh you'd be surprised like i know we're talking about small businesses and yes. maybe medium-sized businesses these happen to like market conglomerates like these yes. happen to mnc's like Hell they yeah. are just so stuck in their ways of doing business in a certain way they really can't look themselves in a mirror and ask themselves am i still relevant to the market yeah. Is our product still relevant in the market? Do we really need to, do we need to start rethinking the way we do business? You know, are we still in touch with our customers, right? Or did we totally miss the mark? And uh, it's amazing, right? It's amazing it really because is. you and I see this every single day. We see these ad campaigns that go out that and, totally are completely yeah. tone deaf. And you're just asking yourself, yeah. what's the VP of marketing mm -hmm. thinking? Like, yeah. I don't understand. This person's getting paid millions and millions of dollars and like, they just don't understand their, you know, their audience whatsoever. I I was just thinking like, uh, as long as it prints money, we don't give an F, right? Yeah. And that happens when you reach this point of, well, uh, you are in your comfort zone. Let's call it like that, of course. Mm -hmm. And you, you lose your footing because well, you generate revenue, you have employees, blah, 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 whatever. Even if you don't have employees, but you have the revenue to show, to show up for the value of your product. And you start to forget, quote unquote, to actually pay attention to the things that you really need in order to continue growing and, and to ensure the continued success of your company. It, it's easier to look at the at the good things rather yeah. than the things that need work or your attention, of course. I feel like that's when you really forget where you came from, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, uh, you forget why you are there and how what you got you there. I yeah. see this. Uh, I see this quite a bit, actually, with um, I guess YouTubers and like content creators <laughs> and stuff like that. I won't name any names, but um, you know, you see people get very, very successful. Uh, and they're super grateful on their way up, but when so they get to the top, day, yeah. they start to flaunt their wealth. Like it's, you know, an episode of, uh, I don't know, whatever, right? Like some <laughs> funny TV show. Yeah, this is and show while pe you know, while people in your audience are like struggling to survive during COVID <laughs> because they can't find a job or like, you know, whatever, right? Like it's, they're living on food stamps and stuff like that. It's just crazy. Like it's so tone deaf of, yes. You know, and, and, um, you know, it's not to say that you shouldn't be proud of your success, but I think that there's levels and there's <laughs> limits. And if you're looking from a monetary standpoint and a quote unquote greed standpoint, if you were to appeal to your audience, even if you didn't believe that, that would actually probably make you 10 times richer than not appealing to your audience. Right? Like, right. Because your ambition is somewhere else. It's not in money. Yeah. It's as, uh, as the, we were talking uh, at the beginning. If you base yourself on the money as the, as the goal, well, maybe your money is your goal because you 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 have a money a money uh, factory. But that that would be a, a an exemption. But if you base your entire whatever idea process goal, I mean business goal, on money, or and you focus yourself onto it, when you have it, you will forget everything else. Absolutely. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Patrick, this was a great episode. Do you have any uh, parting words that you want to share with the audience before I wrap this up? Well, uh, I think this was a fantastic episode. I'm honestly uh, living with a bit of a uh, sad uh, note because uh, <laughs> I wanted to talk more about this, but, uh, but uh, I mean, uh, I guess we can definitely sit down and continue this conversation because uh, there's probably way more that we, that we can share in here uh, in order to help everybody. And uh, obviously, it's just a matter of giving back uh, from what you've learned and trying to prevent or help people prevent uh, the same mistakes that you did, right? So, um, thank you, man. Th again, uh, thank you for the time uh, that you put into this and for inviting me. It's always so pleasurable to be in uh, such uh, topics and talks with you. Oh, it's uh, my pleasure always. Uh, thank you, obviously, for being on the podcast. Uh, thank you for all the listeners at home. Uh, I, I think I just wanted to reiterate that, you know, 
Patrick and I never set out on a quest claiming that we're masters of the universe or that we know everything. I, I think we'll be the first to admit that we know a lot of things because we failed at a lot of things. Right. And that's really an important <laughs> uh, concept for people to kind of grasp their heads around as to why they should listen to us in the first place, right? We're speaking from experience that we've gone through. Uh, we're not invincible. We've gone through it uh, many, many times. It hurts. And it's it hurts right and now. it's painful, man. And I mean, I'm sure I'm going to go to years of therapy for, for some of these <laughs> things, you know, and still am. But, uh, you know, it's it's important that people understand that at home. And, and uh, I hope they, they get some lessons from this. Yeah. Hopefully. I'm sure they will. And uh, yeah, honestly, I guess just one final thing that I wanted to put out mm -hmm. is that... Uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing what uh, what people think about this approach, like a little bit more open and um, just trying to tap into the things that might actually interest, but at the same time uh, be in demand uh, that people really need to find about. Uh, I, I, I think something that we really need to talk about is how to do it during COVID, right? Because yeah. that's exactly what we're doing right now. And I don't see a lot of people talking about it. So, um, I mean, maybe for the future, the, this might be like a, a, a build up into uh, onto that next episode. And if it happens, well, we're going to make sure to, to let everybody know so they can uh, tune in. Yeah. Awesome. So guys, if you wanted to see a follow-up episode to this, maybe like a part two where we can expand on more points that we talked about or introduce some new points, please comment below uh, and let us know. Uh, that's always greatly appreciated. Or if you got something out of this episode, that's great. Uh, you know, you can, if you are watching us from YouTube, please like, comment, subscribe. If you haven't already, ring that notification bell. Um, spread the word to anyone that might, uh, this might help, you know, we're trying to save the world one click at a time. Also, if you're listening to this, uh, you can find us on Amazon music, uh, iTunes, as well as Spotify. You can download us there, uh, there we publish podcasts every Wednesday, uh, just to let you know, this is obviously episode seven, episode eight will be, you know, the following week. Um, and as always, you know, uh, we just want to spread the wealth and, and, uh, have, get everyone some information and good advice um, so that they can hopefully have 5% better life. You know, that's that. I think that's really the goal at the end of the day. As cheesy as that sounds, I think that's the truth. So thank you so much for your time, everyone. And this is TRG signing out. Goodbye.